Hi everyone, I'm Alistair Ben and you're watching Express Photography. In this video, I want to address uh, some of the reasons why we doubt the quality and uh, goodness of our own processing. And I'm going to cover five areas just in Adobe Lightroom here. So we're going to keep it reasonably simple to start off with, but I'm going to cover five areas where people tend to get things wrong. People tend to worry too much or they tend to do too much. Processing is one of those things that's superficially one of the easiest things to do is that we've got this amazing experience that we've had out in the landscape and we have got our raw files uh, safely home with us. But what happens is we tend to open up our uh, catalogs and import our images. And the first thing we tend to feel is a sense of disappointment purely because the images tend not to be as good as we thought we were or they were rather and they don't seem to reflect the experience that we had. And I've spoken to so many people over the years running workshops and teaching classes where they feel this loss of hope, the sense of despair as soon as they open their Lightroom catalog. So what I wanna do in this video is to open up just a random image that I've selected that I haven't processed before. And we're gonna sit and look at the five different areas that are going to allow you to change the relationship that you have with the photographs that you make in the field, instantly be able to see the opportunities of how to move a photograph forward from the raw file, which tends to look a little bit flat and maybe sometimes a bit lackluster. Before we dive into the Lightroom catalog here, just a quick announcement that I am offering a summer sale on my two processing videos, the Dodge and Burn Masterclass and Creative Black and White Processing in Lightroom. Uh, we're offering 60% discount off the normal registered price of those, which is massive savings. If you want to uh, take advantage of that or check out the content, please click on this link above and that will take you to our store where you will see not just those to in the summer sale, but all our eBooks. Right, back to work. So this is the photograph that I'm using, and this was taken uh, beside a loch on the west coast of Scotland um, quite a while ago, I think, if I recall. It was taken in 2017, September 2017. And I remember this morning so vividly because we had these incredibly atmospheric conditions. Um, the west of Scotland can be a stormy place and it was just perfect this morning. You can see there's a very glass-like quality to the water. We have this beautiful fog billowing around and sort of hanging on the top of this mountain here. Um, this is the raw file and nothing has been done to this at all. However, we can see that it's a five second shutter speed taken at f16. I was using ISO 31, which was just the minimum that my D850 would go. And I am shooting at 300 mil. So that was me zoomed in uh, all the way to, to try and fill the frame with some of this content. So what can we do? How can we start? Uh, this is one of the daunting things, I think, when it comes to processing is just not knowing where to start. And where a lot of people go wrong is they start by doing what they always do. Now, that can be something that you've learned from another photographer, their process, their order of doing things. And I know a lot of people who just do the same thing to every single photograph, setting a black point, setting a white point using auto white balance, all of these different things, or even going in and clicking a preset. There are numerous ways to process photographs. And what I'm doing here is I'm just using the simple Adobe color, um, color space. Uh, the Adobe neutral is another favored way of addressing photographs, but we'll maybe look at that in another video. So I'm just going to use the Adobe color, uh, because that's somewhat normal, somewhat flat. So let's look at the first of the five things that we're going to do. And the first is aspect ratio. So the crop that we choose for our final photograph is going to help us to distill the scene down to the stuff that we want to present and maybe get rid of some of the distractions that we couldn't get rid of in the field. The reason I've chosen this photograph is that this is a full frame of my Nikon D850. It's a three to two aspect ratio. Um, and we can see that it's 
vertical 3x2s look quite tall. They're almost easy to confuse with a 16x9 because they are so narrow. And what I'm looking at here is if I, if I just use the crop tool here, we can see that the top here is full of quite interesting content. And the bottom, the glassy water is good, but how much of that glassy water do I actually need to convey what I want to say about this scene? Uh, I'm not too keen on this reflected light in the bottom corner there. So I'm just going to use a simple four by five aspect ratio to reduce the amount of that foreground water. I've got rid of a distraction. I've got rid of that light and the scene instantly feels more compact, a little bit more classical, uh, a little bit more refined um, because this is the function of aspect ratios. I've talked about aspect ratios quite a few times on the channel and I'll put a link up to one of the videos uh, up in the top left hand side there because you may find that useful if you want to check that out as well. So that is the first thing is crop. The second thing we're going to look at is the white balance. Now, white balance again is something I've talked about quite a lot on the channel here um, and the danger uh, any white balance in a photograph is going to be something of a compromise. The camera has to decide somewhere along the line what is neutral. Um, this was taken as shot. I'm going to guess it was probably daylight or something along those lines. I don't tend to use auto white balance very much. So, but let's just say that this is the, the white balance that is somewhat natural. Um, we can see a little bit of coolness and in the clouds here, and we can see a certain amount of warmth in the bottom. So we can see that there is a difference. The, the top is a little bit cooler and the bottom here is a little bit warmer. The light was starting to filter in from the right hand side and it was making the foreground a little warmer than the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate that if we're going to try and neutralize, if we're going to try and use uh, the white balance picker tool, where do you click? Because if we click on the foreground, the image is going to get quite cool. And likewise, if we click in the, the top there in the sky, we're going to neutralize that cooler light and create an overly warmer scene. So to my mind, this is where the creative choice of white balance becomes so important. What is a natural white balance? What is a neutral white balance? We're not dealing with portraiture. We're not having to worry about skin tone. What we're looking at is expressive landscape photography and part of the expression of landscape photography is color. So what I'm actually gonna do here is I am going to come in and look at a cooler version of this scene and maybe play around with it a little. So I quite like the cool sky. It, it gives this image a, a very kind of classical feel to it. But what I might do is perhaps introduce a little bit of variance in that white balance. I might bring a little of that warmth back into those clouds, but we'll cover that later. So white balance is tip number two. Tip number three is looking at the overall exposure. And as we can see here, this is a pretty balanced exposure. We have uh, some bright, bright highlights in the top of these cloudy areas, and we've got some reasonably deep shadows. The really important thing with exposure is that it is going to dictate the feel of the image. So the darker we go, the more moody and oppressive the scene is going to go. And likewise, if we go a little bit lighter, it's gonna get all a bit more bright and airy and explicit. So I'm actually reasonably happy with this balanced exposure. I don't want it to get too dark um, because the, all of that atmosphere is, is <laughs> I think is really good. So I don't want to get rid of that. And likewise, I don't want to start reducing all of the highlights globally or increasing some of the shadows globally. What I'm gonna do is to use just a brush to brush down the highlights in that foreground cloud a little bit. And you're not gonna see much of this actually on the screen because it's a pretty subtle adjustment. 
but I just don't want them to get too hot. I'm okay with the stuff over the top there. And then I'm gonna add a second brush to just open up the shadows a fraction in that there, and maybe through in there. So the first, the thing we'll notice with these adjustments is they're very subtle and they're very slight. I reduced the overall exposure by 0.1 of a stop, which is effectively nothing. And, but I've set the mood of the image, the combination of the temperature, uh, so the white balance and the exposure and the crop, those three things are changing the feel of the image. We're moving away from the original and we're creating something different. We're processing with intent, but equally I'm using the image, I'm listening to the image to allow it to guide me in terms of where I want to go. One of the biggest dangers with processing is that tendency to do too much. And I think that's going to be tip number four, which is don't over process. There are very easy ways to make this image more impactful. And I think with the contemporary scene of impact and social media and looking for external validation, we're looking to catch people's attention quickly and to give them an awful lot of information and to challenge them and to make them click like or give us a double tap for a, for a heart or whatever. Impact sells, impact attracts attention. And it's very easy to come in and crank up the clarity to make the photograph more impactful. But in actual fact, we're starting to lose the essence of what it is that we want to do, which is to be respectful to the content and to convey feel mood, emotion, expression, articulation, all the good stuff, expressing ourselves creatively is the good stuff. Processing images to get attention and to get popular isn't probably the best motive for creativity. So when, we, when I look at, at clarity, there's no doubt that an image with more clarity has more impact and it can be very pretty. I mean, they, they can be very bold and they can be very dramatic. So I'm not saying not to use clarity, but what I'm saying is use it sparingly and use it in conjunction with tip number five. So what tip number five is going to do is to going to allow us to add change, to add transitions, to add depth. We know somewhat that this water is in the foreground, the middle ground and the background and then the skies uh, further back indeed. The easiest way to make this image feel more three-dimensional is to click on the linear gradient and pull it up to about there and add our clarity as a local adjustment. So if I add the clarity there, and we can we can be reasonably aggressive with that. I mean, I wouldn't put it to 100, but you know, we can certainly go by feel, you know, add what is necessary without adding too much. So I'm going to add a bit of clarity and I'm actually going to pull down my blacks a little bit too. And what that's doing is it's tricking the viewer's brain into believing that the image has more depth and three dimensionality. Two dimensional surfaces, when we look at them are like this. What we're trying to do is to convey this, to create that sense of depth and three dimensionality. And what we've actually done here now is we've added some detail and texture and darker blacks into the foreground and the midground, and then it fades off to the top. So the, the top is unaffected. We didn't do anything to the top here at all. And what that's done is it's just allowing the image to feel as if there's a recession, as if the mountain's further away. Introducing transitions is a really excellent way to add depth first of all, and secondly, interest into otherwise uh, less interesting landscape photography. I did say that I might use a brush to uh, brush back in a little of that warmth. And I don't think I want to be overly aggressive with that, but I could. And once you've got the brush in there, you can kind of just eyeball it. And I do like that cooler color palette. I want to be very subtle with that adding the warmth. It's, it's, a, it's a suggestion of warmth. 
So if we look at the two images on the screen side by side here, you can see that we've done very little <laughs> in real terms. We haven't overprocessed this by any means. However, I would say that the image on the right has a slightly more austere feel. It feels uh, more three-dimensional. Um, it has a bit more atmosphere to it. The one on the left, now I look at it side by side, it feels a bit too warm. There's a bit too much warmth in those mountains and it just feels a little bit too jolly. The one on the right hand side, I believe has a little bit more character to it, a little bit more refinement and a little bit more finesse. And don't forget that we've already cropped this down from a three to two to a four by five. Here on the Expressive Photography YouTube channel, what I'm trying to do is to fill you with a bunch of enthusiasm, motivation and excitement to be more creative, to process and to make photographs that you love rather than uh, seeking particularly too much external validation, which isn't really <laughs> very much fun these days. I really appreciate everyone who watches these videos. If you haven't already done so, can you please subscribe and click the bell notification? Um, and that way we are guaranteed to get our content into your news feed to give you the best opportunity to see our new content on a weekly basis. Uh, the other thing you may be interested in doing is the diving into the expressive photography learning material. As some of you may know, we have a number of eBooks, uh, Luminosity and Contrast has been out for a number of years now and is probably the most popular eBook I've ever written. Uh, many people consider it to be a game changer, allowing them to go into the landscape and see things that they previously didn't see and to understand why they're attracted to certain things more than others. There's a whole series of these eBooks uh, from The Color of Meaning and Creativity Superpowers. Finally, one more thing is I would love it if you would go and check out the Expressive Photography Forum. This is a private subscription group uh, where people can post images and comment and get feedback on your creativity, on your photographs. Uh, there's all sorts of learning material on there that I produce on a weekly basis. We have regular meetups on Zoom to discuss all sorts of aspects of creativity. There's a 30 day free trial, so you can check it out for 30 days before your card will be charged. But of course, we truly hope that you can join us for the long term. Other than that, have a great time wherever you are. Uh, it's good to be back here on the west of Scotland and I'll be here for a couple of months before starting up workshops in September. Thanks for joining us. I hope you found this stuff useful. Do give us the old thumbs up and dive into the comments if you have any other things that you would like me to discuss in these weekly videos or if you have anything else to say. Bye for now. Thanks for watching.